So, coming at you from the compound, and today we're taking another look at an old favorite. It's a, uh, it's a dusty but well-built uh, Mopar Dodge 360, 5.9 liter. I had a local, uh, a local machine shop who's been around for a long time that does really good work by the name of Blockhead Enterprises, Kevin Miner. Great, great, great uh, machinist and a great technician. I had him rebuild the engine for me. And uh, as you see, he even resurfaced the flywheel. Now, I went ahead and uh, I told him not to paint the engine uh, for a reason. Because I wanted to make sure I put uh, some good Eastman's uh, some paint that's uh, rated for heat on the engine. You see, I've got all the ports taped off. Um, now these here, these are the, your, your stock uh, cast exhaust manifolds. And let me tell you something, they're in great shape. This engine only had 57,000 miles on it. So at the end of the day, I, I just wanted to go through it and uh, really freshen it up. I bought a brand new, uh, new old stock alternator, okay, the double pulley. I've got all the pulleys, they're all painted. And they've been uh, sanded down. I've got uh, this little engine stand. I built this. I built this engine stand because the ones they sell you at Summit, um, they should be ashamed of themselves, the people at Summit. They're so flimsy, you can't even hold up anything with them. They, they, it's rickety. It's really, uh, it's beyond the pale, to be honest with you. But the reason I'm bringing you here today and talking about this engine, um, I wound up, uh, losing my job because of the vaccine uh, status in this country. They were trying to force the vaccines on all the employees. And there was three of us that got sent down the road. But uh, needless to say, um, I landed on my feet. Um, I landed another job. This other job I had was, uh, it was a Canadian-based company. And, you know, I ain't got to say no more than that. I mean, Justin Trudeau, uh, think about it. It's, uh, it's Joe Biden 2.0. And he's even worse than Joe Biden, I think. But. Neither there nor here, um, we're not going to worry about that. There's an old proverb that says to uh, never argue with reality. The reality is they let me go because I didn't uh, comply. Anyway, um, I did okay. I'm back at it again. But the reason I'm talking about that type of situation was I was full steam ahead, um, focused on this, this Dodge build. And as you see, I've got the cab here in the shop. And uh, we're going we're gonna to get back at it. That's my, my whole objective here with this video is to show you that um, we're getting back at it. Now that we're, we're focused not on looking for work, but we're focused back on um, getting back to the things that really matter, which is building your, your vehicles and your projects and getting them underway. Uh, the other situation we have is when you store an engine, even though it's been all rebuilt, now this has... Uh, the, I've added the oil, I've spun the oil pump, pushed oil through the engine, um, through, the, um, through the drive where the distributor goes in. Um, I've spun it, I've pushed oil through the cylinders, I've pushed oil through the cams and all the journals. And that's fine and dandy and it has a break-in uh, break oil that's in there. And I also have added the uh, appropriate uh, additives that go into a break-in for an engine like this. I've got them all in there. Now, that being said, the uh, engine builder, he told me, he says, hey, look, if the engine's going to sit, go ahead and spray some stuff in the uh, in the cylinders to kind of coat the walls, some WD-40 or whatever. But what I did was I took his advice, which makes sense because I have a little heat in the garage and I have a little cold sometimes, so I didn't want any kind of uh, rust or corrosion um, taking place in the cylinder. So what I did was I added this stable. It's a fogging oil that goes in the cylinders and uh, I did all the cylinders and then I rotated the engine assembly um, you know at least four to six full revolutions I got everything moving around but uh, that's the situation if you're gonna leave an engine for any length of time you don't want the rings to uh, to seat up and rust to the cylinder wall so you want to put some kind of protective coating in there and I truly wasn't sure if the engine oil alone would do that so I went ahead and fogged them, and we, we rotated the engine assembly and made sure everything was lubricated really good. And now it's ready to go back in its spot over here. 
as you see, this is my daughter's setup over here. She's got a, uh, I've done the same thing here. This is a little Hyundai engine out of a Sonata, low miles. But uh, we turn around and got that parked there with the transmission because they she wrecked her car and got the same one. So we have a low mile engine here. But uh, the real situation is right here. I mean, take a look at the uh, the detail on that. It's I know it's dusty, but just an overview. I want you to know that this bad boy is going to be purring like a kitten. You know, I could have went with headers. I really could have went with headers. But to be quite honest with you, I think this was the KBS coatings I put on here. Now, the only thing I've got to do is pull these off and actually bring them up to 350 degrees for an hour and bake them. And that will bring the... Uh, coating to a full hardness but I actually um I know maybe I'm a little different but I actually like the stock exhaust cast manifolds I mean you can go ahead and get the uh, headers and you know if uh, some people just really enjoy the headers that they're loud they oh they put more airflow out you get more horsepower I get it I totally get it I'm not looking for massive horsepower this isn't a race uh setup that I'm doing this has plenty of power and I've got a four-speed in this truck. It's got the granny gear. If I need power, I'll throw it in four low, four uh, four-wheel drive, and put it in first gear and hold it to the floor. There's no rev limiter on this engine. You hold it down, and whatever's behind you is coming with you. But uh, I like the cast stock uh, manifolds. I mean, and here's the thing. I could have sold these on eBay. Let me tell you something. There is a market for these. Uh, people trying to do retro builds and stuff like that and let me tell you something they sell so it had nothing to do with the money aspect or anything like that i just like the actual look of it and uh this truck actually had air conditioning on it but uh we're not going to probably go with the air conditioning at first i i do have everything for the air conditioner to go back in it and uh we'll see but just to give you an overview if you're going to store an engine for any length of time especially one that's never been to the dyno yet you want to make sure you rotate it regularly, um, turn, spin it over, and go ahead and put you uh, put you some fogging oil in the cylinders. This is just extra added insurance. All right, and uh, a shout out to all the YouTuber DIYers out there. If you think that you can do something like this, I just encourage you, you can. Um, it just takes time, you know, and we've got the rest of our lives to build these things. So get out in your shop, get something cracking. And do something with your life. Do something with a project. Uh, don't just sit there and wait for something to happen. You make it happen. You're the one that's going to be the uh, captain of your ship of life. Go ahead and uh, set a sail and get her going. I mean, get something going. Uh, even if it's a small project, do something. It's very uh, good to have your mind active and creative. So, All right, guys. This is Bri over here at the compound. We are uh, going to update you more and more as we get more time to work on this. Uh, 86 Dodge Ram, a W250. It's a California Survivor, so she's in good shape. And we're going to make it back and put it back to uh, original condition. And we're going to really enjoy this truck going down the road. All right.